Anything can happen Friday. The art and cultural side of Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. We are at Anything Can Happen Friday, where we focus on social culture and lifestyles around Southeast Asia. And I have been speaking with Dr. Joseph Gonzalez, who is the founder and artistic director of Aswara Dance Company, and Un Yamada, who is choreographer, dancer, and director of Ko Un Yamada. So we were talking about how the perception of dancing has changed, or is it the same? And any differences between Malaysia and Japan? It's different, I think. Um, uh, speaking from a Malaysian point of view, even in Malaysia, it's very different. Mm-hmm. So, uh, urban families, people who live in the big cities, mm-hmm. um, they encourage their children to study violin or piano and ballet and uh, tap dance from the time they are very young. Mm-hmm. But it's always mainly as a hobby. Mm-hmm. They don't really think that their children would want to become professionals. And I know many, many parents of these urban-centered children, when the, ch- when the child asks the parent and tells the parent, oh, I think I want to become a dancer, right. I think they face a lot of resistance, especially if the child is a good academic student. Right. And, the, and the father and the mother would say, no, I think you can become a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer, right. and then why don't you continue to dance as, uh, as a hobby, as a part-time mm-hmm. uh, an interest or activity. So for that, parents are very enthusiastic. But the minute uh, a gifted, an academically gifted child says, I want to be a professional dancer, all the warning bells start <laughs> ringing, and exactly. parents get very, very worried. Actually, it's worry. It's worry about the career because the career is not a long career. Yeah, the career doesn't bring in a lot of money. So the parents are nervous for the child. I think right. it's not an evil sort of way of stopping them, but it's just because they know it is so insecure. Mm-hmm. A performance career uh, doesn't last very long usually, unless you're an exceptionally gifted artist that can go on for many, many years. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then in, in Malaysia, we have uh, parents who are more from the small towns, the, the more rural parents, the more village parents. It's very interesting that these parents are quite encouraging of their children and very open. Mm. And I find that very odd uh, in my own experience at Aswara that the the families where the parents are not so highly educated and they just have a sense of um, openness, um, maybe a a sense of uh, surrender and if they are very spiritual people and they say, well, if the child wants to do this and if it's God's will, then let the child go and do whatever they want to do to be happy. Is it more like appreciation towards a certain kinds of art form? Mm, I don't even think the parents actually understand it or oh, appreciate it. They just allow it, you know. So when I see the, the kids coming to Aswara, for example, I'm speaking from my experience right. of working there for 20 years, uh, most of the parents don't really know what is a career in dance. Mm. They just think the child wants to dance, so maybe they can have a career. Um, because usually the children are not very academically gifted mm. and they can't go to university mm. and study medicine or accountancy. So maybe dance can give them some kind of career. So there's an openness which I find very unusual. Mm. And when we have a big show at the end of the three years right. or five years or six years of study and all these parents come from very far away and they are really shocked when they see their child and it's like my, my son or my daughter can do this I can't believe it you know uh, it's it's a it's a very it's a very beautiful experience for me also to see and this also happening. Parents will feel the sense of achievement. Yes, and they are so children. open. So it's very strange. We think that in some ways our community in Malaysia is becoming very closed and very narrow, and yet in some ways in some pockets of society there's such openness, mm. you know. And the people who are educated and you think might be more open about this perhaps are not, you know. Um, Again, it's not a very clear line. Of course, you have parents who are educated and who appreciate the art and know about dance and music, who really uh, give their children everything so that they can succeed in careers in music and dance. But usually in Malaysia, a career in dance uh, is largely uh, geared towards opening a school, a ballet school, Mm -hmm. and sending in the children for ballet exams and modern exams and tap exams and they can become very very successful financially so it's not really performance or choreography 
So we had so a lot of private dance school. Then recently we had a lot of hip hop dance school. <laughs> yeah, the very entertainment, close to culture and yeah, TV show. Oh, right. Yeah, so many kids dancing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then how is the support from the government in dance industry, and to bring the standard to the next level and inspire people to dance professionally? Yeah, very difficult. So always, so I I apply the foundation for government, and so we can get money for the new production or touring in the overseas and in, in in touring in Japan, but not so much money, not enough money for dancers and staff. So we have so another part of job. Then uh, we have another production. Then cover all the overall salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about in Malaysia? Um, Malaysia again is a very unusual, and strange country. Um, the government supports uh, a lot of very big organizations uh, such as Istana Budaya, the Department of Culture. So around the country there are about let's say 30 professional dance groups belonging to the different states uh, and they are funded totally and 100% by the government. Uh, but unfortunately the kind of work that they do is very much more towards tourism and uh, it's more concerned with uh, selling Malaysia abroad and we are using the Malaysia Truly Asia packaged kind of performance. Um, The government support for education is very good for performing arts because they have set up uh, University Malaya, uh, University Sultan Idris, um, University Science, uh, Aswara, all that are supported fully by the government. So the students pay very little fees to go and study performing arts, which is very, very wonderful. Then the problem becomes what happens to the child who is very good uh, and doesn't want to be in part of these government organizations and wants to be an independent artist. Then the similar situation maybe uh, is all over the world and they have to work project to project and they have to try to get funding, apply for funding, which is very, very difficult. There's hardly any funding around, so we have to do some kind of fundraising projects or they have to teach and support their uh, artistic projects uh, or they have to look for funders so the uh, Aswara, the three boys that in uh, Uni's production of One Piece, three of them are funded and supported by uh, the Saim Dabi Foundation. So five years ago I approached Saim Dabi, explained this problem that we have because I want the dancers to focus on art right. uh, and the commercial things are quite easy, they can do very easily, it's not a big problem. So to concentrate on art they need to do class, they don't need to worry about other things and just be very focused. So the Sign Dabi has been uh, funding us for the last five years and uh, they are able to reach a level where you can have an international choreographer come and choose them to be a part of her show. So I think this is a very uh, special uh, situation and I wish we can convince the government, not just in Malaysia but in Japan and everywhere, that uh, private uh, independent artists need to have access to a little bit more uh, funding Mm -hmm. and make the funding system uh, better for everyone to create work and create art, you know. It's really difficult everywhere. So this event is also supported by Japan Foundation and uh, there is a collaboration between uh, Japanese dancers as well as Malaysian dancers. I'm sure the experience there must be very interesting because Malaysia has lots of cultures and the, 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 the dancers can, you know, different kinds of elements and Japan Japanese dance they have their own elements yeah so when they work together how was it like was it really challenging yes yeah, very <laughs> challenging <laughs> was, First, yeah, yeah. really exciting every day <laughs> yeah the whole moment was exciting so dancers uh, Japanese dancer always surprise the, the movement and some habits so, so many things like eating <laughs> and how to rest Oh. Every, you know, the every moment we surprise each other. <laughs> yeah, that is a very, very big uh, exchange. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the beyond that but how project. But uh, uh, rehearsing, uh, where when it comes to rehearsals, yeah. how was it like in terms of communications and the synchronizing in a few movements? How was it? Was it really difficult? Not so difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
because uh, explaining in English mm-hmm. is very difficult, mm-hmm. but the dancer can catch the how to use the body. Yeah. So yeah, yeah we do. Okay. And they can understand because yeah, I think yeah, it's it goes beyond language. Yeah. yeah. So the the, the yeah, yeah the body is the language that speaks so many different things. So they can communicate that way. But in this production, actually, the two pieces, mm-hmm. one is all Malaysian cast mm-hmm. only, mm-hmm. and the other is all Japanese cast only. Mm-hmm. So they are not actually together, together in the mm-hmm. same dance work. But you know, the five dancers from Malaysia went to train in Japan for two and a half weeks. Um, and then come back here and they continued their training and they are working with uh, Unyamada for the first time. I think for Malaysian artists to work with international dance choreographers is uh, not something very easy to find uh, because it, t- it costs a lot of money. So we are very grateful that Japan Foundation says they want a really deep collaboration, a deep, deeper exchange uh, and not... Uh, and not just something that's very superficial, you know. So this time, I think the the model for the exchange was very meaningful for the Malaysian artists because they are taken from here, very comfortable, very warm climate, food that they're all very used to, and to go to live in Japan where it's the the lifestyle is very different, um, the language is different, the climate is different, and yet. When you're in a dance space, I think every dancer feels at home. Mm. Yes. You know? I think yes. that's the beauty yeah. of uh, being artists, yeah. Yeah. sharing the same yeah. interests yes. together uh, beyond the language barrier, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, we'll come back after this short break. We'll talk about uh, the project One Piece and the Rite of Spring with Dr. Joseph Gonzalez and Un Yamada.